The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. And so I have to, because I am uh, one of those people that uh, understands the power of Mother Nature and the treachery sometimes, uh, the wrath of Mother Nature and the ocean can visit upon the lives of mortals because I understand how quickly tragedy happens, because I understand how dangerous the ocean can become. Because I understand that most times you end up in a life and death situation at sea, it will always be at the dusk. You will never find yourself in a moment where you are in distress at sea and the elements aren't working against you. I see the uh, front page of the Nassau Guardian this morning has uh, three, the pictures of three of those people that were part of the fatal crash in Eleuthera and... You know, a lot of times we we think about the fact that a lot of our uh, media consumption is is politics or the goings on of countryhood and nationhood, etc. And sometimes, you know, it, it, we 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 do not factor in uh, that human beings are still a large part of what make up this planet, and uh, for a large part, it is human emotion that that we must at some point stop and cater to. And so, having seen this on the front page of the uh, Nassau Guardian this morning. I thought, I thought that, you know, from, from a seafarer's perspective, I wanted to make sure that I at least uh, pay some homage and provide, hopefully, some mental solace for the people that may be going through this tragedy. I, I, I couldn't imagine having to be on a small island like Harbor Island, right? It, it is literally a half a mile wide. Uh, these people are probably very intimately known to their entire community. It, it, it's not as if... They are from a big city. It is literally three lives snubbed away instantly in such a small community. And so you have to imagine the emotional toll that must be taking on the people of Arbor Island and Eleuthera. Of course, I didn't mention it yesterday because I wanted to ensure that we had confirmed uh, deaths. Uh, we, we live in a time of instantaneous media. And uh, we do so without care or concern for truth, fact, or the emotions of people. And so this morning, now that it is confirmed, Candace McDonald, Leanna Cartwright, and Jay Roberts have met their fate. And uh, it happened in what I could only imagine to be one of the most tragic ways for it to happen. But it, it is the thing that gives us pause and lets us know that human mortality is still very real and that it is something we ought to be conscious about on every occasion that we get an opportunity. Uh, it also lets us know that life is but a vapor, and it dissipates quickly, sometimes not even into the night. Sometimes it dissipates into the day. Uh, and so we must love a little harder, do our best to be the best humans that we can be, reach out to our brothers, and be sure that we are doing our part to make the planet a better place. Because it's instant, and it could happen instantly. All right? And so I just wanted to make sure that I uh, got that out of the way. 
Uh, it is it is very sad. Uh, it is very sad when these things happen. But, you know, I always say to people, one of the things I want us to always be very cognizant about is we are a water-based nation, unlike many nations of the world. Uh, the Bahamas is possibly the largest archipelago in this region, for certain. And the navigation of our waters are so difficult that men thought that they should write a line about it in the national anthem of the country. Uh, it lets you know that, that, that there is always great tragedy that is possible, all right, when you're at sea. Okay, so hopefully I didn't drag you too, down, too much down with that this morning. That is absolutely not what I'm here to talk about this morning. I'm sure you know my voice already. It's Levin Miller. I've got one of your favorite people in the studio with me, so go ahead, call Mama, call Tedda, tell Uncle Winky, tell Uncle Bala, let everybody know. I have with me in studio this morning the Bishop Denzel Roll, right? You all really like him because, that, you know, the last time I had the guy on my show, right? And I want to let you know, he got show, you know. Y'all can, <laughs> can feel free to go listen to him. I don't have no problems with that being the Bishop, all right, right? Uh, but the last time I had the Bishop on my show, I mean, people ask me for musty three weeks. Well, when Denzel coming back? I said, well, Jesus, I there every morning. You, you don't miss me? When you can bring Denzel back? So I'm happy that he's finally here. He's, he's, he's been able to clear up some space in his calendar and uh, get back on with me. I really appreciate him for coming. And, uh, you know, there are, there are few people that I value uh, as Christians who still have social value, right? A lot of people are so safe. I do not know where they live. I know some Christians operate in the stratosphere. Some of them operate in the mesosphere, Bishop, right? They are, they are... I am not saying right to you. I am <laughs> not going to say right. <laughs> they, where they live at, I'm not sure men are allowed to journey, right? Or oh sojourn. God. Uh, nonetheless, there are times when, when I, uh, I see things in my, in my passing, and, and from time to time, the bishop and I, we, we have dialogues about whether or not I be a good enough Christian, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so most of you would have known or heard by now of the spot in, in the media between... Uh, uh, between is he the Reverend? No, he's in the, he's in the Reverend. I like that about him. He's always just kept his name between Kirk Franklin and an adult child of his, right? Does that even make sense? An adult son of his. Mm -hmm. uh, and man, I won't say. Let me I like to confess. And I sit in on the front of the bishop, so I don't want to end up like the story on and I answer the fire, right? Right. Bishop, sometimes I struggle with cussing myself. You struggle. Uh, listen to me. Struggle is good. Listen to me. Sometimes I sure if I struggle in or if I lose it. That's the question. <laughs> Sometimes I struggle in, the other times I just straight out lose it, right? And as somebody who is beginning to make my own uh, journey throughout public life and, and having a public presence, et cetera, et cetera, right? Sometimes I got to remind myself, boy, you just can't cuss, mm -hmm. right? But, but some people, Bishop, that, they, they struggle with it. Yeah. They love God, you know. Right. They can speak in tongues, but you, right. you let, I believe the tongues button and the cuss button must be on the same, uh, uh, not the, what, you, you, you remember the CB radio? Sometimes you turn the frequency up, sometimes you turn the frequency down, depending on where he is. Right. Yeah, I believe the speaking in tongues button and the cuss button on the CM knob. The radio? Yeah, on the CM knob, right? And so you better pray to God the button keep going left, because mister, if it come right, this speaking in tongues could turn into something else pretty quickly, right? Uh, but, I'm sure you've heard a little bit of it, uh, what's been going on in, 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 mm -hmm. in, in, in the media. And quite honestly, I, I don't see, I don't, I find no fault in, in Kirk Franklin. I, I you know, I, I believe sometimes you got to oh, cuss wow. these children. That, that, that's how I feel. Some of these children need cussing, especially big ones. Um, and I understand being in an emotional place when you've done everything that you feel like you could do to help a human. And somehow, despite your best efforts, uh. right, uh, Okay, um, despite your best efforts, the people just are not conforming. So, what do you do then? Um, le let me begin, since, since I'm starting here, let me uh -huh. start by, um, on, your, on your opening comments, sure. I gotta do that, sure. because sure. I have a chance now to sure. speak, and I want to extend our prayers uh, to the families of those um, dear ones that have, that have parted. Um, it's, we always have to grapple with death, it's always painful, but for it to happen in such a tragic way, I can't imagine the the effect. I've seen persons who dared to me died from disease, from cancer, from other ailments, but in such a tragic way, in something that um, 
no way, no one got up that morning expecting to hear this kind of news. So we, um, we pray for those families. We pray for those attached to them. And for the community at large, those small island communities, like you said so well, um, everybody feels it. Mm -hmm. Everybody is, um, I spoke to, I, I found out some, some friends of mine, persons close to me, were somewhere close to that um, activity that happened this weekend. So we just pray for them and pray strength for them. And um, um, commend and, and encourage the people of God. Let's continue to stay in prayer, man. Except the Lord keeps the city. Mm -hmm. The watchman waited, but in, in vain. vain. But in vain. Go you ahead. Know, so that's our posture, and mm -hmm. we must continue. And so our prayers are with that family. And I have to mention that we're praying, and we're praying for the nation at large. Um, sometime, like let me just. I have, please, if you, I know you don't mind, that we had, we found ourselves praying over the seas when it came to boat boat accidents mm -hmm. um, about four months ago, consistently. And I'll be honest, when I heard about the two things that happened this weekend, mm -hmm. the one with the brother, I, knew, I know that brother personally with the jet ski accident, mm. personal um, 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 colleague, friend mm -hmm. of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it woke me up to say, no, you know what, you need to get back on that prayer assignment because mm -hmm. we were constantly praying over accidents. Like it came in a prayer time and mm -hmm. our prayer meeting, we've been praying about accidents regarding the sea. And so um, this weekend kind of uh, woke me up to, you know, to get back on that assignment, to be praying. And so, and that's why I will never get away from this. We got those of us, you know, this, you use the old church of God, boy. Mm -hmm. Those who mm -hmm. know the virtues of prayer. Or oh, prayer astract. <laughs> and we, those who know the virtues of prayer, we got to keep on praying. Keep praying. Who know the power of prayer, we got to keep on praying and keep on covering. So I, I had to say that first. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned, let's go to this thing about um, our good friend. Mm -hmm. Brother, 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 Cook. brother Frank, brother Frank, brother Cook. Brother Frank yeah. Let me start by saying this, um, Levon. There's a word that you use that I don't take for granted. Mm -hmm. Use the word struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say something here that's getting trouble right out of start, mm -hmm. and um, they can throw a rock at me, and that's fine. I believe every believer. I said every believer has a struggle. Mm -hmm. What makes us believers? Is the struggle. Okay, come on. That's what makes us... I can need my tambourine for this at but, some point. You know. <laughs> that's what makes us believe. And now, I need to, we need to define now, is it truly a struggle? Mm -hmm. A struggle suggests that there's some sort of contention. There's some battle going on. There's a fight going on. Let's don't call struggle what ain't, what ain't struggle. Sure. So we need to define, is it truly a struggle? A struggle is that fight that, that Paul says that... What I would do, mm -hmm. I do not. I do not. And what I would not do, mm -hmm. I is find that myself I do. Find I find myself, myself do. Yeah. And he comes to this conclusion in Romans 7 oh, wretched man that wretched I am. Wretched man. <laughs> so he acknowledges the fact that even this brother, who is so po who is so powerful, who is so used of God to have to write this portion of scripture that he wrote, all the scripture that he wrote, he says, even I, mm -hmm. I got struggles in my flesh. Mm -hmm. But we got to define, though. Are these truly struggles? Well, Bishop, okay, so we we have people like 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 Kirk Franklin, right? And and then there there is actually another guy that I like. His name is Steve Harvey. From time to time, he loses me on the woman issues, but uh, you know, <laughs> Steve says something that that I that resonates with me so well. He said, you know, he spent a long time in his life not being a Christian, uh -huh. right? He said, and you know, he on this Christian journey, and he he he, he working with it, you know. But, you know, he, he don't consider himself a good Christian yet. He's still working on it, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, even as a Christian, though, one of the things he finds difficulty with is that there are some places, some sentences, some, sometimes you get in an emotion. The only thing that fits in this, in this uh, space right here is a cuss word. I, 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 I talk, and listen to me, I, 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 I marvel at people that say men that use profanity lack the English language, because then I invite them to go and Google the word anti-disestablishmentarianism, and when you find it, <laughs> you come back to me. All right? Okay? Yeah. So there ain't nothing wrong with my vocabulary. Not a thing. Not a, nothing at all, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, Bishop, right, as prolific as I would like to be, as loquacious as I deem myself, Sometimes, Bishop, the best word right in here is one of them four-letter ones. Uh, you, or you, even a three-letter one fits you, perfectly you, right here. You jumped in, right? And I still, I still want to make sure we define this thing, struggle. Mm -hmm. Is it really a struggle? Is it a choice that I'm doing? I'm a choice is I'm it, making. I, is I, it really sure. a struggle? Um, I, I, you, I can, let, me, let me make this very controversial line, mm -hmm. and then I can take a show where you don't want to go, and sure. then I come back. Sure. I, I say this as I preach to the people that I pastor. Okay. 
to the people that I pastor. Mm -hmm. And I know my assignment to the people I pastor. Mm -hmm. Those who are listening, this is what I preach to those that I pastor, mm -hmm. as the Lord directs me. I say to them, you can be a Christian mm -hmm. struggling with fornication, mm -hmm. but you can't be a fornicating Christian. Mm. Okay, I can see that. You can be a Christian, mm -hmm. a born, let me move from Christian. Sorry, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say Christian. You can be a born again believer mm -hmm. struggling with fornication. Okay. But you can't be a fornicating born again believer. Okay, I could. You'd be a born again believer, struggling with anger issues, but you should not be an angry born again believer. Mm -hmm. You can be a born again believer. Watch this, struggling with homosexuality. Okay, but you cannot be a homosexual born again believer. Ah, okay, I see you. You I can see be you. a born again believer struggling with cussing, mm -hmm. but you can't be a cussing born again believer. <laughs> See, it's the struggle that yeah, defines us. Sure. Okay. It's the struggle. What is happening now in many instances is that we are validating the struggle that you don't struggle with it, just do it. Mm -hmm. That's where I have the problem. Mm. See, if it's struggle, that means I'm trying to correct. Sure. I'm trying to, I, I realize the fight that Paul realized. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, I'm grappling with this and trying to overcome this. So if it's truly a struggle, I got you. But now, if you are living this lifestyle, if you are an adulterant born again believer, no, that's a problem. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now I had to wonder whether you're born again. Because mm -hmm. when we are born again, there's something in us that says, I can't do this. Mm. I shouldn't do this. this. No, this is beneath me. And I say it again, this is beneath me as a born again believer. And so when I, when I do certain things, I realize I am declining. Mm. Second Peter 1 verse 4 says, we have escaped the corruption of this world. Mm -hmm. We have escaped that. So there is a standard that the born-again believer must ascend. Paul says, not that I have a prayer. He said, but this one thing I do, I'm pressing toward a mark. Mm -hmm. There's this thing about the born-again believer that keeps on pressing. So we cannot wallow in the slop, man. Mm -hmm. we, we just fall down and slop and come out. We're not pigs. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you pig or did you slip in mud? Mm. Now, I listened to that voice note. Mm -hmm. I ain't sure man, I that's a slip in mud. Man, I feel I feel Or whether that's a pick. I feel like Brother Franklin was trying to hold his mule. I I, I cause you know, you know, you, you talk about the struggle, right, Bishop, right? Mm -hmm. And naturally, my natural propensity is to walk away from most people, right? Mm -hmm. And but sometimes that don't even have nothing to do with God. I just I value my public image and I wouldn't I don't want to damage it for you. Right. But but I like a little bit of reggae music too, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's a reggae song that say, but if a sound boy tests me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I, I still working on this Christianity <laughs> thing, right? I grew up to Bambi. <laughs> right. And right next door to us, they, there's a song they used to play almost every day. Tagging in a place. It's a bomb. Whenever I hear that song, it's some, <laughs> I just pray to right. play it while I preach it. Right. It's, it's do something to right. me. I, I just go to a place. Right. And so, <laughs> and so, so my natural my natural propensity is to walk away from people and not answer them. Right. But but I I, I, I also listened to the, to, the, to the voice recording with Brother Franklin, right? Right. And, and, and you know, the fella said, to, and you, you, you kind of heard when he... Click the switch for cake. <laughs> because, because, because and, I'm, and I'm telling you, most people, are, well, I imagine that most people that, that struggle with the use of profanity get to this point. Mm -hmm. No, see, you feel like I can't answer you. Right. Let me show you, you can't can, beat can me cussing. Yeah, let me, let me, I, I ain't cussing you because I can't cuss. <laughs> I ain't cussing you because I won't cuss. I would prefer to use standard English. Yeah. But since standard English seems to be something that evades you, let me help you out with this, all right? And, and, and even in law enforcement, you will hear they say, you must always speak to the person in the language that they could understand, right? And since you don't understand the Britannia's English, let me see if you understand foul language. And I, and I believe that that is where a lot of people who mean well, who, who uh -huh. have public endeavors, who, who are doing it for spiritual reasons, Bishop, find themselves that you, you think I just play. And I don't play. And let me, and let me assure you of my non-playingness. See, there's this, um, and, and again, you, you, you text me. You didn't say Denzel because you have right to say Denzel. You're the mm -hmm. boy. You're the soldier. Mm -hmm. You text me and say, Bishop, I need you to come down the show. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't text Denzel. You text sure, Bishop. Sure, So you can get Bishop. No problem. That's what you asked for. No problem. All right. Um, there's this thing, I, and it's crazy. I, just, I was just on this little teaching, this teaching series in our church. I dealt with this. This thing jumped at me. I know you know this text. He was a good church of God boy. 
that says, fret not thyself because of mm-hmm. evil doers, mm-hmm. neither be thou envious, mm-hmm. right? And we know that and we talk and we use that. We usually preach about watching people's stuff and being jealous and feeling bad about who got money and them people ain't living right. They got stuff and I ain't got no stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what we usually preach that on. Mm-hmm. I... I was I was studying this text and I was stopped at the first three words, Psalm 37, the first three words. And it says this, leave on, this tripped me out. Mm-hmm. It says this, fret not thyself. Yeah. I went and looked up the word fret. Okay. That's what messed me up. Let me tell you what fret means. Mm-hmm. Fret means to make hot. Mm. Don't let them get you hot. <laughs> fret means to become heated, to heat, like you fret that water before you make your tea in the morning, you know, your coffee you, in the morning. You know, that that is actually, uh, that is actually, I'm trying to remember where I've seen that word before in another language that actually kind of translated. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now the text says, let's don't go that, that back end, fret not thyself. Mm-hmm. Nobody can fret you. Mm-hmm. You fret yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't let them heat you up. They can't. Okay. It's you that get heated up. Nobody can make you mad. Mm. Nobody can make you. How you get? I don't have that much authority over to make you mad. How does somebody make you mad? You can't make me. Mm. Yeah. I decided to get mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a decision to get mad. Now, I, I know we can get here at some point because I want to talk about this element about it. Is that I believe, again, our good Pentecostal ba- upbringing, we, there are words we could not say. Correct. We couldn't say lie. Correct. We couldn't say, I don't but growing up in the house, but you wouldn't dare put it on the pulpit. No. You couldn't say backside. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 we, what, we, one time I, I was in the yard growing up and I said something, but um, cut hip. Mm-hmm. And my daddy hear me. You, what would you say? Mm-hmm. There are words we couldn't say. And you wouldn't even consider saying that from a pulpit. Mm-hmm. My pastor taught me, Bishop Linda Wallace, he taught me this when we were growing up young ministers. He says, uh, listen, I, um, some, once somebody said something, it may have been me, that said, man, I was, watch this, I was in, I was showering and the Lord speak to me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Mm-hmm. He said, because once you say you were showering, I ain't ever come after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, some, a there in are some females and, <laughs> and some males mm-hmm. who they stuck in that shower. Yeah. Whatever the Lord said you are done shower. That was that for you. That wasn't for them. They, they hear that. <laughs> yeah. They stuck in the shower. So my pastor, Bishop Wallace, taught us, don't you say those kind of things. Don't take us in your bathroom. Mm. Don't take us in your bedroom. Much less the profanities that people say. Mm. We have, the, the language of the believer has degenerated so much. Those, those markers that I believe that were in place, that I know of, mm. Mm. they've gone. The things that we've heard added from pulpits now. Mm-hmm. That's you. That it's like how you just cuss. Mm-hmm. You don't. You don't. You don't cuss from the pulpit. That's like damn. But, but the first time know. I heard damn in the pulpit, I that it was it was Baptist preachers, of course. But it's like so now you say Baptist, of course. Why, why, <laughs> you try, why are you trying to, to do that to my wonderful good I, Baptist? I, I, I let you know it wasn't them Church of God preachers. No, I, you, the Church of God preachers was. I can tell you, yeah. you wouldn't dare. No. Now, I, I can be honest. I mean, I again, I have my I have wonderful, I love my good Baptist friends. I love them. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, mighty men of God. But some language I hear, you can, that's your last time preaching. Oh, yeah. You ain't gonna know it after that. No. Matter of fact, used, we may cut this sermon short right here. Yeah. So I, the, the language has degenerated so much. And, and what happens is, as you get so comfortable, what happens is you get comfortable. Mm. When you get comfortable, you end up getting comfortable. Mm-hmm. I could see that. And and then you don't even know how you slip and slip. I, I remember, let me say this on Guardian Radio, I remember when I um, realized that you don't go to hell if you take a little bit of alcohol. Because mm-hmm. of course I grew up knowing that if you if you sip alcohol. Listen, if you walk past the alcohol, well, you're dead. You're scared to hell, yeah. You're dead, and in hell, you will lift up your eyes. <laughs> your tongue will cleave to yeah. the roof of your yes, mouth. Yes. There will be weeping yes. and gnashing of teeth. Correct. So I found out, it's okay. I ain't go to hell for this. Mm-hmm. You know, Paul tell Timothy a little for the stomach. A little bit. So, um, so occasionally, I was um, drinking a little albumist. I still church God boy, so I, okay. you know, I was drinking a little albumist. Okay. That I gained, I went, I think I, I did Trevento once. I said, no, right. this ain't too bad. All right. And um, th- this, is a se- this is a season, I was not pastoring yet, but right before I started pastoring. Okay. Around about 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. And then I found myself, you know, once every three weeks or so, drinking a little albumist or drinking a little 
little through vento. Mm -hmm. Then I see, every, then it moved from once every three, four weeks to once every three Every weeks. Friday, yeah. Then and every week. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it got to the point where when I get into the food store, I look in the fridge, oh, Lord, you know, we I got to top this up. We out. <laughs> and this this decline happened for me, man right. of God. Never right. lost being man of God, preacher, all this kind of good right. stuff. Right. And I put, I don't think I ever said this on my station. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. said this on, on my show. I yeah. said this on your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I watched where I got to the place where every other day, I, I sit down eating pork chop and white rice on a Tuesday. That even, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's Tuesday food. Yeah. Little and pork chop and white rice and a little glass. And have a little bit for the stomach. And I realized how you can get so comfortable when you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, I shut that whole operation down because that, because because then I, then, and I and I, I'm glad I went through that that period because mm -hmm. it opened my eyes at how we get on these slippery slopes, mm -hmm. and you start you start to descend into places and you don't even know how you got there, and that's why Grammy taught you, your good Grammy don't taught touch you, it. shun the very appearance, yeah, yeah, don't even touch it, shun the very appearance of evil, because you will know. Bishop, there's that one other thing that I want to get on. You know, Go on. I heard. You know, I, we got some people here who got the front gate key for heaven and must see the back gate key for hell, right? Because people have started placing Brother Franklin. And I'm just using him because he's, he's, he's the subject uh, of, of this situation here. But, I mean, people cuss all the time, right? But <clears throat> I, I see people in social media, the, the, the court of public opinion has already decided whether he could still make it in heaven or whether he get into hell. They must have got the keys. And, you know, something came to my mind, right? And this is kind of why I like, you know, being from the church of God. These, uh -huh. these scriptures, they don't, they don't go nowhere. They're in there, right? Right. And, and I went to Matthew, Matthew 16, right? This is Jesus go ahead. talking to Peter. Yeah. He says, and I tell you, mm -hmm. you are Peter. Uh -huh. And on this rock, yeah. I build the church. Correct. And the gates of hell will not, will not prevail against Sure. It. That's Matthew 16. Yeah. All right? Let me take you to where Peter, I mean, Peter find himself. In Matthew 26. Yeah. All right? Let's go to it. So this is St. Peter, who was Petros, right? Yeah. The rock. The thing that the church was built on. Mm -hmm. Come on, Bible. This is why you need the paper Bible. Yeah, they don't feel it. Because this digital Bible trying to, yeah. trying to embarrass See, me. See, when you paper Bible save, you real save. <laughs> <laughs> you Matthew, Math, Matthew 16 and 26 Matthew, or Matthew 16? Matthew 26 and I think it's 72. 26. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it was the story of when Peter had found himself in the court wrangle, uh -huh. right? And um, the, 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 the women had said to him, are you not Peter that had, that had walked with Jesus? The Bible say, and Peter cuss, and Peter swear, until they would leave him alone. This is the same Peter who, in Matthew 26, was supposed to be the rock that the church was built on now. Let me, let me help your sermon. I can help your sermon even better. All I, right. I can help your same sermon. Watch this. You, you didn't have to leave Matthew 16. No. No, I can show you something. Since um, so when you preach this again, you can nail this. <laughs> All right. So you just read Matthew sixteen, mm -hmm. where he says, um, Peter, in verse eighteen, it's you. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my mm -hmm. church. Right. When you read in the same Matthew sixteen, and verse twenty-two, you just read verse eighteen. Uh huh. So don't see that the problem why your why your phone trip because you're going too far. <laughs> you don't have to leave to go to chapter twenty-six. Mm -hmm. Stay in chapter sixteen. Mm -hmm. Read verse twenty-two. Then Peter took him and rebuked him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Mm -hmm. And But he turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Wow. This is the same chapter. You mm -hmm. don't got to go to verse 26, chapter yeah. 26. In the same chapter, the Peter that just brought revelation and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, mm -hmm. is the same Peter that Jesus says, Now get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. In the same moment, in the same experience, in the yeah. same encounter, yeah. one minute... He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. That means he got a spiritual impartation. Mm -hmm. He spoke spiritual revelation. And in the same voice, he says to the same dude, get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah. And so we understand in our frailty, in our human frailty. Human frailty. Just like that, mm -hmm. we can go from one, one status here to another here. Now, again, because you invited Bishop Denzel, I can tell you that there is a difference, though, between the Peter that we see Post Pentecost and mm -hmm. Peter pre. Mm. Post Pentecost, he has the Holy Ghost on the inside of him. Mm -hmm. Just as Brother Franklin has the Holy Ghost on the inside of him. Mm. Because I see on, on my feed, people are typing that he is human just like us. That's one of the dangers. And I again I know we have people from all over listening, but I I, I this is the faith that we believe. Mm -hmm. We believe that with the Spirit of God in us, we are no longer human, we are superhuman. Okay. 
We believe that the supernatural power of God lives in us by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So while we are, we, we are taught things and we learn principles and we learn truth from, from, from that pre-Holy Ghost Peter mm -hmm. and that pre-Holy Ghost Church, there is a difference. You see an election happen in the pre-Holy Ghost Church. Mm. You don't see it happen in the post-Holy Ghost Church. Okay. In the pre-Holy Ghost Church, they cast lots to determine who's going to replace Judas. Mm -hmm. Post-Holy Ghost, when it was time to send apostles to Antioch in Acts 13, they were in prayer. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit said, set aside Paul and Barnabas. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the difference between the pre and the post, okay. that we're supposed to be spirit-led. Mm -hmm. So, again, I am not condemning um, um, Kirk, mm -hmm. but I am not condoning either. Sure. Because the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us is supposed to give us the ability to bridle that thing in our mouth. Mm. Because as believers, the strength of being a believer, watch this, um, Levon, is not only in what we think, but it's in what we say. Yeah. Our strength is in what we say. Life and death is not in the power of the thought. It's in the power of the tongue. It's in the power of the tongue. Sure. Ma Matthew 12 says, you will be brought into judgment for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. Okay. Your, our strength is in our mouth. Uh, our, we have the creative power of God. God did not think the world into being. He spoke it into being. Mm -hmm. That's why this is so powerful, and I and I while I, and while I, again I'm not going to be at the Lambay's Kirk. I don't want us to leave here. But we all assume when we fall, we all frail, and that's what happened. But we case we get mad and this and that. I I don't I can't leave that message. Mm -hmm. That ain't the message I want to leave. Sure, sure, sure. But the message I want to leave is that for the born again believer, the Spirit of God is in us. We have the God nature. I'm responsible and accountable for what comes out of my mouth, mm -hmm. because what I speak causes things to happen. Mm -hmm. I speak causes things to manifest. So I am very, very, very um, 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 uh, cautious. And I am not elevating dancing beyond reason. And if people think I live for myself too high, that's your business. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But based on what the scripture says, I have to be very, very careful of what comes out of my mouth. And so and someone like a Kirk Franklin that has promoted the power of God the way he has mm -hmm. and the love of God the way he has and who has given us... Um, <laughs> who told us, <laughs> even though I'm hurt and see, I smile. Yeah. <laughs> I know God is working, but I smile. That's what you taught me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, we got to be careful how we make this word that we preach of no effect. How we tell you, now I'm I saying this like this, right? But I don't really mean it like that. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with the church today. That we are given license to a gospel that is conditional. Mm. We, we have promoted a conditional gospel. We have promoted a conditional Christian. We have promoted, <laughs> by his stripes we are healed, pre-2020. Mm. Mm -hmm. Once 2020 hits, by our wisdom and by science we are healed. Mm -hmm. This conditional gospel. We lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. However, you can't lay hand on the sick now because you may get them a disease. Mm -hmm. Your Grammy and your granddaddy went to people's home carrying a little container with communion in it because mm -hmm. they were sick and they could not do communion. Mm -hmm. So your grandparents and your uncle those would go to their house and give them communion mm -hmm. for their sickness and tell them that you eat this. This is going to bring healing. You drink this. This is going to bring strength to you. Mm -hmm. But now... Because the conditions have changed, mm -hmm. don't don't um, we don't don't fool that that, yeah, that yeah, ain't yeah. that ain't too yeah. safe right now. Yeah. We are in a compromised place, and I and I know I take, probably taking this thing too deep, no, but no, no, it no, all speaks to this conditional gospel, this convenient gospel that we have to be very, me included, we have to be very careful of that. This is the gospel, but you know, um, circumstances all all the cases. Hmm. Well. What about the people, uh, uh, Bishop? That say, that say, you know, God, God chooses imperfect men. God could have gone to the Pharisees if he was looking for a bunch of stand-up fellas when he was starting the gospel. If he didn't want a bunch of cussing fishermen, he could have gone to the Sadducees and and get him a couple of decent, upstanding men to to proclaim the gospel of Christ. And and Jesus himself, who pre Pentecost, post Pentecost, always had God with him. Even he find him found himself in 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 in. Positions where where he was either forceful in language. You remember 
him him saying to, to his mother Mary, listen, I was about my father's business, which some people would look at as 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 hard language, right? Because right. he was talking to his mother. Right. Or you see the incident with him in the, in the tabernacle and, 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 the, and the anger that is displayed there in the tabernacle. And so people say, well, man, man Bishop, I decided to say him in one little cuss because <laughs> I feel like, like, you know, everybody is subjected to wrath, even the Christ. He shows these cussing fishermen and these thief and publicans and, and the people that he chose. He chose them to show you the power of transformation. Mm-hmm. They were chosen to confirm to you. That's why we can pull Rahab and put her in the lineage of Christ. Mm-hmm. We can, we, can pull, we can pull Judas. Why don't pull Joseph? Mm-hmm. No, let's use Judas, the one that slept with his son's wife mm-hmm. and has a child. Let's use that child and put him in the lineage of Christ. We can do that to show the power of transformation. Yeah. You come as you are, but you don't stay as you like. Sure. Sure. That so, there is a change. So you could, that, be a, you could be a believer that struggles with cussing, but you can't be a cussing believer. No. I like, I, I'm actually stealing that, by the it, way. It's yours. Okay. If any, call me in the first time. <laughs> <laughs> if any man be in Christ, mm-hmm. he is a new creature. Mm-hmm. No, so we, you don't need light for light. You need light and darkness. Indeed. So there is the, we are all called from our places of darkness. The cussing, the thiefing, the, the, the homosexual, and the adultering, the fornicating, because all of them are darkness, the backbiting. Watch this, the lack of faith. It's all darkness. Mm-hmm. We are called from that darkness into his marvelous light. So you got to pick now. You can't be called into light and then conveniently want to then, don't forget, I, I come out of darkness. No, but you are in light. Okay, and I, and I got one for you there, Bishop. But, go, go. but right before I get to that, let me, because the people them say, I sound like I can't find the scripture. So let me make sure I read it so they can see I read, miss. Read your scripture, bro. I, I, I from the church of God, I don't know where they take, where I, they take me for. I never doubted you had a scripture. It, it says, and this is Matthew 26 and 73. You got it now. You're you you The phone waking now. Read your text, bro. It say, and after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech beareth thee. Mm-hmm. And it goes on in verse 74 and says, Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crowed. Now, this is the same Peter who we was building the church on two minutes ago. Well, this is literally we in the same book. Right. I, I, this is where Jesus, and this was the journey towards the court, because this was during the time Jesus was getting ready to, you know, kind of make the ascension. He was setting up the church. So now Jesus is at the crucifixion, and they say, and you the boy who was be with Jesus. Peter say, listen to me, miss. You don't know me. I don't know you. You come here to watch the crucifixion. Right. I come to watch the crucifixion. Please stand over there. The little girl say, no, mommy, that's him. Peter say, miss, if this is your child and you love her, hold her close to you. One other woman say, Peter, and you and she. He say, Peter say, you know something? If y'all don't, cuss word, cuss word, cuss word. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same Peter, same yeah. anointed Peter. Now, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I get the whole uh, pre pre Pentecost, post Pentecost, but 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 there is a scripture. Same anointed Peter. I believe he was the same anointed Peter. Same yeah. anointed Peter. I, I I believe he had this. He, or he or he had the same. <laughs> he had the same, same Peter. Definitely, he had the same purpose. Yeah. So so he was still purposeful, Peter. Now you gotta understand this castle. Now you understand that God didn't talk to donkeys. Mm-hmm. God yeah, but that's that the God, purpose of the donkey. God, no. But God has spoken and he has chosen to anoint it who he wants. Right, so God spoke through the but donkey. Now it God is the spoke trans- But see, so we're talking about God using vessels. God sure. uses whoever, whenever. Uh-huh. All right, and we see that also through scripture. But now, for those of us that are born again, and I keep on making this distinction, born mm-hmm. again believers, mm-hmm. that when you are born of the spirit, you are spirit. The spirit of God is alive on the inside of you. And you learn that text, that Galatians 5 and 22, that says the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, meekness, temperance. I, again, these things are the fruit of the spirit that mm-hmm. you were born again into the spirit of God. Sure. And so once the spirit, we, this, this idea of, of being, being born again, the spirit of God, that's not, that's not denominational. That's not Pentecostal or Catholic or Anglican. Being born again is spiritual is for everyone that believes that, but that, pro, that, 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 uh, that act of being born again transforms the life of everybody, regardless of your church upbringing, regardless of your color, regardless of your past, being born again causes the spirit of God to be birthed on the inside of you and the God nature. Uh, first, second Peter one and three says we are partakers of the divine nature. Mm-hmm. 
the divine nature. So there is the ability in Levon and Denzel and every listener that they can bridle their tongue because the Spirit of God is in us. Yes, Peter did these things, but at that point, Peter was not filled with the Spirit of God. Mm. He was not filled with the Spirit of God. As, as, I'm not saying that if he... Was he that, any less the rock, though? He was still Peter the rock. Well, that, 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 no, I, I don't want to get into that because um, when you study the text and looking at it, the church was not built upon Peter. The church mm -hmm. was built upon the revelation that he is the Christ, sure. the son of the living sure, God. Sure, sure. So I don't want to attribute more to Peter than... than that. That's my, the that's my okay. theology. That's no problem. Okay. So I don't need Peter too much. No problem. Okay, so there, 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 there's also a, a group of us, especially from the College of Thought, that, that would suggest that... Uh... See, they don't let me into that college. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't get in there, so I ain't as smart as y'all. So go that, ahead, help that, me, that, 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 educate me. That, that reads the scripture that says, and, and and we and we know the scripture in its in its in its total form. Only what seem it right to a man is right. However, the end thereof is destruction, right? Good. And so there are some people that say, man, I I like I don't see who decided that that the, that the four letter word should have been a cuss. Who who decided that, right? Because. Personally, I use it. I have no issues with it. And sometimes I feel like it is the most appropriate adjective. As a matter right. of fact, it is possibly one of the most versatile words in the English language. Because <laughs> it could be an adjective. It could be a noun. It could be a verb. It could, you, you, you follow me? Listen, so it, sometimes I put this in there because it is the most expedient word. If you play the name, place, thing, animal, this fit. you could put it everywhere. Yeah, this one fit. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, so, and so there are some people, like myself yeah. sometimes, who... And maybe to quell my own Christian uh, 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 underpinnings, that says, man, and besides, who decided that this was a bad word? See, I, I like this one. Let's you're use being this duplicitous. One. I learned that word from the College of Thought. Yeah, okay. You're being duplicitous okay. because you began by saying it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked you to define this right. if it is sure. a struggle. Sure, sure, sure. Those persons who are not condemned, mm -hmm. who there is no struggle, mm -hmm. I if they are using this language, I, I'll never forget it, preached to a church in, in Nashville. Um, um, I was off to school. I was in school in Knoxville, University of Tennessee, mm -hmm. go volunteers. And I had to preach an engagement up in Nashville. And I preached to this church. Um, this church, most of the persons, they were African. Mm -hmm. So, man, I didn't preach, man. And man, it was powerful, man. They, they was like, man, you were mighty man of God. You were so powerful, mm -hmm. this and that. Can we take you for, for lunch afterwards? I said, no problem. So we sat at the table eating. Leave on, they started talking. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you what they're saying. Definitely put up the mics on. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> And I sit in here saying, well, Mato, I mean, yeah. they, they, they firing and firing yeah, yeah. and tell me how powerful yeah. the word was. And, yeah. and they told me how blank powerful it yeah. was. And I was like, yeah. oh, Lord, man, yeah. oh, Lord, man. Yeah, yeah, them two things will go together. You don't put them two together. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to find out that for them, it was no issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was no struggle, and to them, there was he that knoweth to do good to him mm -hmm. and do it not to him, it is sin. Mm. There are persons who are, there is no conviction. They have no there, there's no struggle. There's no conviction. There's no sense of wrong in what they're doing. I can't get in that. Mm -hmm. For those people, I don't get in it. But there are some people that may say, "Well, I don't see it as a cuss word. I just see it as strong language, right?" So because you know we, we live in a we live in a very versatile universe now, right? right? Where where everything has a grouping. Like you you either man, woman, or man that identifies as woman, or boy that is boy but boy like so so everything is in a compartment now we live in a compartmentalized world right mm -hmm. i may not necessarily see this as a cuss word right like i like i say to people all the time what jesus do to the fig tree that was that was a cuss right <laughs> jesus did not use foul language no no, no i'm saying the what tree. he do to the fig tree <laughs> he cursed the fig tree yeah. right. and, and think about this jesus said you fig tree i can tell you something you'll, you'll die before you <laughs> ever grow another fig right <laughs> Man, you don't think that's a cuss? That's a cuss. <laughs> if you think mm -hmm. the next time someone come to you looking for fig, you could you you will live a purposeless life. You will never bear another fig as long as you stand up. Right. <laughs> that's a cuss. <laughs> but, but, but some of the things that, that people like myself may say, you know, I, I, this is strong language. I wouldn't use this type of strong language everywhere I go. Right. But to say that I don't deem it appropriate in some senses. I can't exactly say that that's how I feel. And I and I feel like I am a pretty decent Christian. Like I, you don't feel it's wrong? Not wrong, no. Mm. Inappropriate. Sometimes it is inappropriate. So you see it... It's like nakedness. You it's see like, it I, lawful I, but not expedient. Well, well, let me explain it like this so I don't lose myself. It's like my <laughs> nakedness. I don't think my nakedness is wrong. I just don't think I should be naked in front of Denzel. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, And I, we share that. Good. But when I go to my doctor, man, you don't see me. 
I don't want to see you. <laughs> Man, a matter of fact, I just get my idea. Just give me the little yellow thing to tie up. Because you don't, want, you don't need that. I, I know what this for. And she, and she just because it's a she. She walks out the room. I don't know why talking about to see me naked in t- thirty seconds. It's I, all this. I didn't see that I'm reminded that you are still single. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't understand. I, I am not ashamed of my nakedness. Now, is my nakedness appropriate for every situation? No, and therefore I will not apply it to every situation. I, I feel the same way mm. about what people call profanity. There are some people I don't cuss because our level of conversation ain't there. Oh, and then there are some people. Let me just tell you, I come right out the gate and just give it. And to you them. have no, you have no conviction, no struggle. Am I convicted about it? No. No struggle about it. You no, are at I, peace. My struggle is there are some people. They ain't, for instance, I tell people, right, there are a few people on the planet I wouldn't cuss, and that group of people getting smaller because my grandparents keep dying, right? <laughs> so there are some people that I feel like I really shouldn't cuss this man, you know. Right. But this man keeps saying the kind of things to me that agitate the cuss bubbles. Right. Right? And then, next thing you know, I tell him, ABC. Are you the, uh, are you the cusser or are you the next person? Who are you? Oh, no, I the cusser. So your true self, your authentic person, is a cusser. I don't. I don't. See or that. you're one that speaks life. I am a life speaker. You are a life speaker. Yes, but that don't. In mean. your speaking life, do you release cuss words as you speak life? Sometimes. As you declare life. Sometimes. Yes. And I don't buy your chin when you beat. No, sometimes. When you beat no, sometimes. So like, I can't tell you don't air. You but... bring blank life. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, like sometimes I tell people, you know, life is a storm. You gotta get up, dust yourself off, and get your together. Mm. Because that is what winners does do. Right. And if you sit here like her and you don't get up off here, we'll take advantage right, of you forever. You, 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 I ain't gonna slip. You, you, I got it. I got, 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 got it. I got the brakes you on. Sure you got it. I got the brakes on it. But and, and this is me speaking life into the situation. Uh-huh. Get up off your laurels, right? Uh-huh. I could put appropriate words. Right. Get up off your laurels because uh-huh. no one owe you nothing. Right. And if you don't get up then these bastard people will continue mm-hmm. to plow you like this. Mm-hmm. All right? See how I put appropriate words? That was pretty good. Yeah. You did really right? good. I you, you've been to that college of thought. I, I swear to God. You've been to that college. <laughs> but, but there are some people, Bishop, who, man, it's, it's not a problem for them, so they do it. I think in the instance of Brother Franklin, mm-hmm. it, it, Kirk don't even sound comfortable cussing to me, right? Boy, I ain't know, but he, sound, he, no, he, but, was, but he could, sounded very fluent in cussology. Hear, no, but you could hear the row. I mean, the, the anger when he says, I will break your neck. <laughs> I will. And, and you have children, right? But you have wonderful, adorable children. Maybe Absolutely. Your, maybe your children haven't gotten you there yet, right? I have a son. His name is Alexandrio Miller. That boy too young to get you there, my son. Trust me. L- Bishop, let me tell you, the other day he stood up on his tablet, his $286 tablet, because it was frustrating him. What do you say he stood up on it? What do you stood mean? Stood up on it. He's doing something with it. It wouldn't respond to his commands. Uh-huh. And he got so upset, he uh-huh. stood on it. It was at this time that I had to remember that this was my child that I loved. Hold on. So you tell me, hold on. He got so upset that he lost control. Huh? He got so upset that yeah. he had to release this, yeah, the anger this on, anger. On the thing that my money buy. He had to release this anger. On the thing that my it's money almost, It's almost kind of similar to when the, the English words that I want to say are not appropriate. So to release this anger, I got to say some, add some things to it. Not when my money pays. So, so it seems as though this brother should get not an F, but an A. No, no, no. You could Because he is a wonderful student he, of his father. Listen, he is functioning as, <laughs> he is a fun, he's functioning in his anointing. He's just out of his time, Bishop. Huh? And, and, and. It ain't time yet for Yeah, he, he, his time has not yet he, come. <laughs> It's not like your son should get an A because he is wonderfully representing what what I'm hearing from his father. But it is in this instance. But he, st- he stood up on it? He stood up on it. So, aye, aye, so aye, the aye. back screen is broken. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it is in this instance. Aye, 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 I see aye. these calls. I'm not going to be able to take these. Y'all can call me tomorrow. Aye, please. Aye, aye, aye. Don't, please call tomorrow. It, it, that, I, that I, that I want to hold him. He stood up on it? He stood up on it. And he, got, and he, and he had, the, he had this, this, the 15 inch Samsung, the nice bright screen thing. Yeah, and I got him one of these nice little kickstand things too, right? Because I, cause I want the boy to be jazzy. We could Bluetooth it to the TV and all kind of fancy things it could do. It was in this instance that I thought, I, I, I feel like I felt exactly the way I felt. <laughs> boy, I will break your neck. What's wrong with you? Now imagine that. My, my, I have a five-year-old. Right. Imagine that in a 34-year-old. I've tarried with you as long as I could tarry, boy. Question, five-year-old. Will he do that again? 
I don't imagine he will. I think I fixed that. Exactly. Train up a child in the way. Because we didn't, I don't know how much time we had here. We didn't get here. Train up a child in the way you should go. But Kirk says, I've given, I've given this boy counseling. We've done family counseling. Train done- up the child in the way he should go. I ain't, I, I, I go scripture. Mm. Train up the child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he, should not, he will not depart from it. There is a failure there somewhere in training. I don't care what you say. You can't Despite that the fact that I've gone to the train, best counselors. We've gone to the... Look how amazing... How we get to counselors? I identified a problem, Bishop. I said, you know something? This is okay. This is okay. How we scope. get there. I sure. Exactly. See, I know enough. That's why I ain't talk. Yeah. Because yeah. on a train track, I'm a, I'm a translation engineer. That's what mm-hmm. I went to school for, not preaching. I didn't mm-hmm. go to school for preaching. Mm-hmm. I went to school for engineering. Okay. I'm a translation engineer. On a train, there is no steering wheel. Mm-hmm. There's only one engine. Yeah. The parent is that one engine. Mm-hmm. And the train is on a track. How did that child get off that track? If you trained that child yeah. according to scripture, mm-hmm. when they're old, we like fix scripture. Yeah. We like fix it. It ain't, it ain't broke. Yeah. We have a responsibility to train. Yeah. How did we get there? Mm. That this boy can know my dad is changing the world with his music, has been changing the world for the last 20 music, 20 years. I'm gonna record him and I'm gonna make sure I destroy his reputation. I don't know the back. I don't know the backstory. Yeah, no, no, no I, I completely get it. I, I, I don't know the backstory. I, I, I literally only call. I, I, I didn't call you here to, to approve or disapprove of the behavior. <laughs> I simply call you here because I, I just wanted to know. I mean, I, you're in public life. I'm in public life. I right. don't think you struggle with you. You, you don't look like you'd be a good cuss. I myself. No, I, do, I tried you, it. You, it, you, it don't you, come you, up good. It don't, it don't look good. It just I tried it for a little while. It didn't work. Yeah, it wouldn't work with you. It didn't I, work. But 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 there are some people that I know. They are prolific. Yeah. Man, it is it it is wax eloquent when they do it. I've I've been around some. I won't call their names. Some meetings with some very affluent persons, some very well known Professional persons, customers, right? And I I it took me like ten seconds later. Oh, he, did he just cuss this now? Yeah. It was so smooth. It, it rolls was like, like a Rolex. Just, that, like yeah. they need a degree for that. That's <laughs> yeah, off the chain. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but I think we have to. And I I'm sorry. We, 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 we almost we almost flattered it. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, to talk me, about me. how did we get here? Mm-hmm. The idea that if I gotta do this with my son, I'm I failed. But if I that? have to do this with my son, what, 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 when he gets you there, I can break this board. If I get there with my son, mm-hmm. I have failed. I'm the one that has failed. All right. Denzel Antonio rule with a son and a daughter saying this. Uh, boy, watch him on the train. Please watch me. Mm-hmm. If I get there, I failed. And ask me this 20 years from now, and I will tell you again, I failed. All if right. if you're catching recording with me, with me doing it to my children, I failed. All right, Bishop, that's my music. That must be me and I all the time. Sound like it's give me, give me, Give me the best 10 seconds you got. What you got for them? Listen, man, this speak life. Mm-hmm. Life and death is in the power of our tongues. The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say, mm-hmm. not what you think. Every battle in your mind is words away from being broken, from being delivered. Speak it out of your mouth. Speak life, man. Appreciate you, Bishop Denzel Rule, my guest. I ain't been able to get to none of these calls. You're all going to kill me for these and these text messages. Call me and text me tomorrow. I'm leaving Miller. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, the station for fresh news and smart talk. They do it the whole day. Don't move. They've got news next.